Hi everyone and welcome to the weekly predictions uh, based on astrology for the week of August 19, uh, 2019. I usually start with predictions or rather review of the predictions for the previous week uh, but I received some feedback that my videos are going on way too long so I decided to put those into a separate video which I will post shortly. So let's just uh, dive directly into the predictions for this week. Uh, so this week uh, the predictions that are sort of uh, ongoing and are good for this week and next week for some months to come are mainly the uh, prediction that uh, says that we will be receiving, uh, expecting more than usual um, number of earthquakes, problems with old structures or removal of old structures uh, basically because they have outlived themselves or uh, geopolitical tensions, reshuffling of the governments, passing away or removal of old leaders, etc. So those are ongoing. We have protests in Hong Kong, you know, some tensions, US, China, you know, India, Pakistan, and they're ongoing. But uh, for 2019, 2020, those will be kind of more serious than, um, I guess, at other times. Um, so that is uh, an ongoing prediction. Another one is that Oh yeah, and for this week, the strongest um, influence of that we will see is uh, August 20th, Tuesday. So another ongoing prediction is based on a Jupiter square Neptune, and that has to do with increased focus on things like oil, pharmaceuticals, chemicals, and uh, I mean, maybe shipments, immigration, um, some sort of infectious diseases, etc. And um, that will potentially can manifest as sort of a wet weather out of control, floods, and problems with either shipping of oil or problems for those companies that are involved in producing or shipping oil, etc. And we do have some tensions, you know, especially involving, I guess, Iran, but also a lot of floods. I guess I wouldn't say it's necessarily as unusual for this time of the year, but we will see intensification of this aspect uh, come September. Uh, for this week, uh, the strongest influence is 20th and 24th of August. Um, another prediction that is, um, I guess, new for this week is that uh, there may be in more sort of a stronger than usual focus on things related to healthcare as well as government contracts and any sort of service, either businesses that provide services uh, that are supportive in some way and or professions such as teaching, nursing, you know, hotels, etc. Something that's basically service industry and or uh, perhaps there will be some focus on uh, uh, announcements of governmental contracts, who is going to get them <clears throat> or changes in basically uh, companies that receive them or some sort of uh, solutions that again um, focus on service providers and or also workforce basically is there enough staff to support certain service areas. Uh, for uh, Then let's look at specific countries. For China, there's ongoing prediction where basically uh, they're going through a multi-month period where there's an intense sort of um, or stronger than usual rather um, probability of them experiencing some earthquakes, disasters, or um, basically dealing with issues with pollutions uh, as well as some sort of uh, secrets and deception or hacking or spying activities that are sort of hidden underground and or involve chemicals, like I said, poisons, pollutions, and or just pharmaceuticals maybe developing some uh, new medical, you know, um, uh, I guess new medical like, uh, treatments. Uh, but again, these either will have to do with um, using either new chemicals, using chemicals in a new way, or some things that are literally hidden in some sort of secretive programs. So this week, uh, the peak influence for that is August 21st, 22nd. Um, another new influence uh, sort of um, that has started about this week and will continue through November 5th for uh, China as well as for the US. Uh, interestingly enough, these two countries, they have certain planets in similar degrees. And um, so when one country would in, uh, expect, experience certain transits, so would the other. So this period from about this week, August you know, 19, 2019 through November 5, 2019, we'll see a kind of an um, increase of various tensions, uh, increased probability of conflicts, power struggles, as well as major announcements. For US, it may be about like certain leaders, politicians, or famous people such as celebrities, 
especially on October 2nd, and the intensification of tensions may occur around September 16, 18, October 1st through 5th, and October 21 through 24. And um, other influences for US would be that there may be again some sort of focus on sort of country status on, on the world arena as country being a leader in or on country's leadership or some sort of famous people that come from this country. And of course, there's this, I guess, um, uh, competition for, I guess, is the presidential uh, election or the, some candidates are beginning to sort of compete with one another. So there will be more of that and or some leader will or famous person will become uh, highlighted for, you know, their either achievement or issues associated with them like I said, especially on October 2nd. And there may also be additionally some important public announcements that affect large numbers of people that will relate to like immigration laws, judges, and or um, long distance travel and shipments. So maybe some bans or vice versa, some things may open up in or there's just a new, there will be just a new ruling. Uh, for China, the most critical days are within the period August 26th to 29th, September 17, 18, as well as September 22nd, October 5 through 8, October 17, 20, and October 27, 24 through 27. And uh, like I said, there also may be an increase of some conflicts, power struggles, earthquakes, as accidents, and disasters. So for China, it looks a little bit more kind of focused on potential problems or issues that involve some hidden pressure. Um, and or literally like earthquake collapses or some sort of reshuffling or um, having to restructure businesses or approaches uh, to see international partnerships that will involve either cutting losses or reducing or something or putting a limit on something such as reducing maybe a, you know access to some resources uh, reducing the number of partners reducing the number of destinations to which something is shipped or to where people can go uh, so some sort of a focus more on like kind of tightening the belt, reducing some things, cutting the losses or cutting really the junk that's not needed in the first place, increasing governmental controls, reducing waste, reducing pollution. So it could be something that is just, you know, um, a new initiative to deal with that. Or say there's an environmental disaster or an earthquake and there may be a response needed to basically deal with this to uh, like address the you know mine collapse or... Uh, clean up after some earthquake, address water erosion, and or there may also be increased in uh, conflicts over the bodies of water, or there may be sort of a need to fix some sort of aging infrastructure, especially something that deals with, again, water, such as a dam or some sort of a road. And so these elements or these events may have an element to them where they're covered in secrecy, they occur in the water, over water, or due to sort of, like I said, water erosion, or because of chemicals, like I said, chemical spill, or they may have to do with um, uh, medications, chemicals, again, possibly drugs, possibly poisons. And again, this could be something that's done in a sort of positive way where, you know, the country takes initiative to reduce pollution or something occurs and maybe it's hidden, but it still needs a cleanup or, um, you know, and or the other manifestation is that whatever the issue is, is that it's dealt with potentially with hidden and or illegal means. So now let's go on to the predictions for each individual day. August 19th, Monday, uh, for the market, I predict about 60 to 65% probability that the market will go up and increase focus on the price and value of gold, jewelry, and precious stones. Uh, today is actually Monday 19th. I'm recording this in the afternoon. I did see the market did go up. I haven't had a chance to see whether or not specifically gold, jewelry, and precious stones were, you know, particularly featured in the news. Uh, on Tuesday, the 20th, uh, I believe market also has about the same probability of going up. So looking good. Um, on the August 20th through 22nd, there may be globally increased focus on international negotiations, immigration, and transportation and communication businesses in general, especially international sales, sales and shipments. And on the 20th, uh, there may be some optimism that the negotiations are proceeding well, but then by the 22nd, this optimism may yield to some concerns uh, about the finances kind of either needed to support 
some of these um, projects and or earnings that come from maybe those sales. So there may be uh, concerns that perhaps the uh, profits are not going to be enough or there may not be um, a good opportunity or ability uh, to move or sell the goods. So maybe some arrangements are made around the 20th, but then by the 22nd, um, you know, we come to find out that, you know, even though the sale maybe took place, there's not a good way to perhaps ship something or there's some limitations as far as how quickly the shipment may occur. And specifically for China, August 20th or 22nd, especially 22nd, 20, excuse me, 20th through 21st, especially the 21st for China, I may see increased focus on negotiations with international partners, partners, and those communications may have an element of like being basically based on sort of argument, upset, aggression, disagreement, and or harsh or risky um, statements or even threats either received by China or made by China. And there may be focus on either these negotiations involving, say, weapons or military, excuse me, or sports, uh, and or that uh, certain issues occur in parallel that relate to, again, military or sports, as well as fires and accidents, or just that those negotiations themselves are kind of, um, are, you know, upsetting and are being made using, you know, certain, like I said, threatening statements or uh, people kind of act uh, too rashly. On the 21st, um, I think there is a slight probability, about 55% chance that market will go down. So not a very strong chance, but I think things start looking down in the second half of the week. And on Wednesday, there may be some increased news and surprises related to banks and or financial institutions, currencies, especially digital currencies, uh, electronic payment processing. So anything that has to do with processing information digitally, but information about finance. So there may be um, either some surprising developments where maybe something doesn't go through on a negative sort of manifestation, but could also be a positive uh, news about some improvements. Uh, maybe um, uh, some ability is introduced by these institutions to track, better track sort of payments or better track track sort of where the um, who received the payments, when they received them, so, so, some sort of a new feature that allows users to see more details and track things a little bit better and or more detailed earning reports may come out or uh, the there may be news of increased value of businesses, again, banks, financial institutions, because again, they're providing more kind of detailed information about their statements or they're offering these new features and these new features that kind of allow more transparency, I guess. And so uh, it looks good. Maybe they're perceived as more reliable. And so their value of these businesses go up, goes up. And that's the 21st of August. Uh, for August, uh, for, excuse me, China, the 21st and 22nd, especially the 22nd, again, are important days. And uh, at this time, the focus would be on, again, negotiations with international partners. But this time, the uh, negotiations from kind of having these sort of a rash, you know, and almost aggressive tones now will come to sort of a hidden influence where maybe uh, sort of a, you know, passive aggressive or things are not necessarily said openly, but in the back end, either the country itself or other countries that are the, its partners in those negotiations are using some sort of underhanded means, either they're illegal or there's a secret manipulation, blackmail and or literally uh, the negotiations involve nuclear weapons, nuclear power. So some sort of a threat of this global, you know, basically loss of power or global um, you know, I would say in, in not necessarily inhalation, but a very like strong threat, but it's not very concrete. It's more uh, on the um, side of basically being again, hidden, secretive. And that's, I guess, the scary part where uh, it's a very like strong threat, but it's not necessarily be done openly, sort of this indirect threat and or the negotiations again, revolve around hacking, spying, or illegal activities. So either they themselves are done in secret secrecy or negotiations are open, but the topic of the negotiations revolves around spying, pollution, secrets, mining, underground locations, or underground, you know, in the quotation, activities, or 
uh, illegal activities, basically, or potentially, like I said, mining, recycling, literally, uh, maybe the um, minerals. Uh, so those could be the topics. And we may uh, hear about news about the new contracts or contracts being canceled, shipments, basically who's shipping what where. Again, we specifically focused on either mining, minerals, or perhaps like that nuclear power, or those shipments being done either illegally or in secrecy. And the discussions uh, on the 21st through 22nd uh, for China will focus on those. Uh, and so for the 22nd Thursday, globally, I think the market will go down about 60 to 65% chance. For Friday, yet again, I think it will go down about 60% chance of it going down, in my opinion. And uh, like I said, the whole week we'll see increased focus on like healthcare, service uh, professions, workforce. Um, and on Friday, this will be, um, I guess, this influence peaks. So specifically, we may hear about some new projects or new services or new contracts with government or new solutions, new treatments. And if there's like focus on, say, new treatments or new um, supplements, they may be like holistic and or involve, you know, cattle or veterinary care. So perhaps it will be healthcare, but specifically about maybe uh, improvement, you know, of healthcare of a livestock and or you know, sales, sales, I guess, of livestock or whatever related products, I guess, meat or something like that. Um, and so the focus may be on like natural treatments, um, as well as like sports supplements or treatments that are specifically needed to treat like burns or wounds that are sustained during like warfare or during sports and or heartburns. So things that are basically received uh, like from the cuts or burns um, and or like I said the food supplements especially for like improving athletic performance exercises exercising uh, and weight management and those may receive more attention than usual in the news and again uh, these supplements may also have to do with either like I said weight loss management and or managing regulating blood sugar um, and or there may be news about some supplement having too much or too little sugar, basically, is it good for you or not? Uh, depending on basically whether or not it's, how it affects blood sugar. So there may be something like uh, along those lines. And of course, generally maybe news about sugar um, in the markets. So there may be some concerns about sort of price of those products. If say new product comes up or prices change for old product and or whether or not, you know, the price sort of is worth it, whether these supplements are, you know, performing and are worth the value. Uh, global, uh, another global kind of a influence that will be in place August 23rd, which is Friday through the 26th, which is next Monday, is that there may be increased news about the governmental services that again provide an, uh, some sort of healthcare or support for poor, so social services of some sort and or uh, staff that involves, you know, supporting kind of professions such as, you know, teachers, nurses, maybe police. And there may be potentially either demand for like raises, pay raises, or improvement of benefits, or improvement of social benefits. And or there may be news about businesses uh, that basically provide such services uh, about their earnings, and or those businesses receiving governmental contracts. Another influence that also is worth mentioning that is multi-day influence, it kind of gets into the next week already, is for the 25th through the 27th. So that is going to be um, influence where we will hear more about like banks, financial institutions, as well as rates, earnings, loans, you know, debt, things like that. And there may be some surprises, news about the risky financial deals that go through, uh, sudden changes, and removals of limits and constraints. So during those times, it may be, you know, if there's something that, you know, banks and financial institutions were considering, but they weren't sure if it's, you know, worth the risk or they weren't able to do do, do some due to some limitations, uh, 25th through 27th of August will be a time where those things actually may go through, despite being perhaps risky or new or some sort of, you know, innovation, uh, again, along the lines of usual using digital currency or some sort of digital payments or just using um, IT or AI or something like that, solutions 
and so the payment funds may go through so maybe some uh, project was waiting for the payments and now the payments go through or the project itself may involve uh, improves our ability to process payments or there may be some new surprising uh, source sources of funding or earnings announced um, so basically these will be favorable days for uh, in, in uh, I guess businesses specifically dealing with finances to go th ahead and take on some risky uh, making some risky choices and or investors may also be more likely to make risky decisions or impulsive decisions with their money and so let's see and this may also have to do with something with again processing of the payments and ability to track the payments or see more details about uh, someone's earnings perhaps of the business or of some individuals and this may give some reassurance I guess to investors and that's why they will be able not able but rather convince themselves to go and make some risky choices because they will feel like they're able to track sort of uh, the status of their money or payments a little bit better and um, and or there may be some governmental contracts that again will involve this time financial institutions or financial services perhaps again for the needy for the poor most uh, kind of uh, firstly and uh, those deals may go through because it will be perceived that this is a good time and sort of there's a good opportunity a good deal and one needs to sort of lock in perhaps the rate or lock in this deal a discount or whatever it is at this time because later things may not be so uh, useful or, or so helpful and so there may be perhaps a ra rash rash uh, rush to <laughs> uh, on the 25th through the 27th of August for either users consumers and or businesses to kind of quickly try to uh, make things happen with some sort of new financial deals or um, introducing new um, I guess opportunities to consumers because this will be perceived as a good time for uh, some of these more, more risky financial deals to happen um, also quickly as a bonus um, added bonus I have a section and I have a blog at tolstomka.com where I post these predictions weekly usually on Sundays and so I updated some of the kind of a glance ahead predictions so a little bit of a preview for the upcoming couple of months um, we have a fairly busy August with intense dates I'd say being 2nd through 3rd, 8th through 14th, and 22nd through 23rd, and 27th through 28th. So there will be potentially, again, focus on oil, floods, wet weather, uh, international negotiations, and again, maybe some problems with shipments or problems that affect oil production and whatnot, as well as, at the same time, some potential disasters, earthquakes, either environmental and or large-scale accidents, excuse me, that especially involve uh, collapse of old structure. So this could be true for the US and for China and globally. And so specifically worth mentioning September 12th through 14th, especially 13th through the 14th of September, we'll see potentially strong influence, um, strong, I guess, focus in the news on like oil. Again, could be some sort of a hurricane or maybe geopolitical tensions where the production of oil or transportation of oil is affected. And so oil prices may go up, but also there may be a, poten a potentially strong market move. I'm guessing it will be a drop followed by perhaps a uh, sort of a rise. But again, especially 13th and 14th of September may see a really strong market uh, like I said, potentially a drop at the very minimum of strong volatility in the market during those two days. Then in August, excuse me, October, October 5th and 6th are worth mentioning uh, as uh, days where we will potentially uh, hear about some really major earthquakes, accidents, disasters, and or stronger than usual market moves. Uh, so events may involve again mudslides, some sort of a moves in soil, and or literally mining operations or even mine um, explosions in the mines or collapses of the mines or uh, you know collapses of some sort of governments in some parts of the world or sh uh, reshuffling of the governments sort of problems for the established older leaders um, as well as the disasters may potentially may involve not necessarily disasters but problems may involve either airplanes again accidents involving airplanes due to potentially strong winds and or there may be some tensions international 
in international negotiations that potentially may end up, um, you know, deal is maybe reached, but under very strong pressure where, you know, one side, I guess, loses, but they have no um, other way but to comply. So really tense days, like I said, another potentially days 5th of, and 6th of October, where one would look for strong volatility in the markets. And lastly, this new prediction I added for, for October 25th through 27th of 2019, and especially the 26th of October, may see yet again increased probability of really strong earthquakes, accidents, some sort of uh, environmental disasters, but also, importantly, violent clashes, terrorist acts, military tensions, and again, more than, you know, usual, stronger than usual market moves. So these same dates correspond to a sort of intense transits over the China chart. And so it's possible these events will also relate to uh, either, you know, it could be some tensions in Hong Kong independently and or could be related to, say, tensions between US and China. And that's uh, the 25th or 27th of October. And so those developments may affect global markets and or, like I said, independently, we may have tensions in China and independently somewhere else in the world, there, there could be some of these uh, mudslides, disasters and earthquakes, etc. So that's it for this week. And I hope you enjoyed this and come back and check it me out uh, next week. So see you guys later. Bye.